Hi, welcome to video number six of 12 that covers how to use the ProVal Smoothness Assurance Module to develop grinding plans. So in this video we'll cover section six as described in our guide to using the ProVal Smoothness Assurance Module. Section six is titled, Use the Export Section to Work the Portion of the File. So, so in this demo we'll demonstrate setting up sections and exporting in them and then also entering some events and also using some of the map functionalities that everybody should be aware of. We'll go ahead and just jump right into the software. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the project files here. So right now it's adding an existing surface file and this this project's located on Route 68 in Monterey County between Monterey and Salinas. So this inertial profile file was run for 6.8 miles, roughly 36,000 feet. So what we're going to do is export the first 12,000 feet of this file to a separate PPF file. And then work then that'll allow us to work on a smaller file so why would we want to work be able to work on a smaller file well when these when these profile files are in the order of 20 30 plus miles long they can often cause some computer issues your comp the file might be so large that it'll take forever to process or just take a really long time to process or cause your computer to hang up so sometimes you need to export out smaller sections to work on them. So in this example this job's seven miles long I would recommend for most people they would have a computer that could easily hand to handle this so I would not break this one up but for we're gonna do it here for the purpose dem of demonstration. Okay so what do we need to do to break out to pull out this first 12,000 feet? Okay first we need to define that section so we do that in this editor function. So you might all be in the smoothest assurance module or you might be in the ride quality module. Regardless we need to be clicking on this editor function button to be in the editor module. So right when we get to this module it'll say editor basic and as you recall we need to have this we change this text on the screen title by selecting the navigate button and selecting a drop down. So right now we have basic, it says basic. We want to define a section so we're going to select sections. Okay so somebody, this once we do that we get the editor section screen. Somebody has already set up one section in here and it's defined as a leave out. We can see that going from 1000 to 1050 on the layout line and there's that orange shaded line indicating where that leave out's at. These colors can be set in the settings elsewhere in the program, but if you don't do anything, if you leave your settings at the default settings in ProVal, this will show up as orange. If I change this leave out to the only other choice, which is generic, it'll change it to blue. So we'll go ahead and leave that as as generic, or excuse me, as a leave out. Okay, so what we want to do is add a section that goes from 0 to 12,000 feet. So we're going to go up here and look for where it says add section. It's under the editor portion. Add section. Okay, now it asks for enter some new section name. We're going to say 0 to 12K. That's going to be the name of this section. So click enter. And we added a row, and there's the name. We still need to add the information over here. So it's going to go from layout line 0 to up to 12,000. So I need to change this. 12,000. Okay, we're going to leave it as generic. So up here we could also remove a section. So let's say this leave out wasn't really warranted, so I'm going to remove that. Okay, now I have one section in here, it's generic. Okay, I want to export this and make it its own file so I can just work on that independently and have a smaller file to work on. So we're going to click the export function. And what it's going to do is basically it's going to take the original name of that PPF file that we opened up and then it's going to add the text of the file name onto the end, you know, with the underscore right in front of it. So underscore 0 to 12K, that was the name we named that section. So now we just have a shorter PPF file. So we're going to save that. We'll just go ahead and close this. OK, 
Okay, my computer's getting slow here. Close. I'm discarding. I don't want to save any of those changes. So there's that file that we just exported. We'll click on that, open that one up. Okay, so we can take a look at our file. Right now we don't have any file selected, so we've got to select that file. And there's our station zero and goes up to 12,000. So now we have a shorter PPF file that might save us some computing resources or allow us to just deliver the contractor or somebody a grinding plan you know, for the first third of the project while we were working on the rest of the project, developing a grinding plan for that. Okay, so what else can we do with this editor button? Okay, well, let's go back to the, we're in the editor section, so we can add a, an event. So let's do that. So I know there's an intersection on this highway that's called Olmstead Road. So if I want to add an event, I need to figure out what the stationing is. So we're going to go back to the basics function, click on the map. Okay, and here's here's the town of Monterey and this highway one six or highway sixty eight that runs towards Salinas. That green flag is our station zero and the end finishes the 12,000 point. Okay, we have Olmstead Road here. So if I pull my cursor right on that intersection, I can read the latitude and, and longitude right here, these values here. So if I, I hold my cursor on that and I write those numbers down, I can enter them in later on the other screen. So we don't need to have this cursor exactly right on the eastbound layout line, which is what this file is for. Just you know, in that intersection. We miss it by 10 feet, 12 feet, or a foot. It'll find the closest point on that layout line and give us the coordinate, or the, the layout line station. So we know it's zero, and that's 12, so this is probably six, seven, seven or 8,000, somewhere in there. I can't slide this up or down and read, read what that station is. That's not in here. It'd be nice if it were, but. So let's go to, I, I wrote, I put my cursor on there, and I wrote these numbers down ahead of time. We go to the navigate events. We're going to add an event under the editor. Okay, and we'll call it Olmstead Road. Okay, so my latitude is was thirty six point five eight three nine seven. 36.58397 and my longitude was minus 121.849789. Okay, so I haven't hit enter yet, but as soon as I do, we'll, we if we put these points in right, we'll see a dot right there. Hit enter. Yep, so there it is. There's that coordinate. Okay, so now <clears throat> we could go to we could go to our smooth assurance and get look at our roughness plots. We'll, we'll go ahead and just look at the IRI for the right wheel path. We analyze that. And we'll go ahead and look at short continuous. So there's our Olmstead Road. We can see that you know there's a lot of roughness going through that intersection. This is probably might be another intersection. Well, anyways, we. You could help. You could identify what some of those locations are and see them better on your roughness plots. Okay, here's our elevation plot. So, also we have this map function here. So, we're going back to this map deal. And what's worth noting here is since we have selected short continuous, I'll see all the right wheel path short continuous locations that exceeded our threshold of 180 or whatever the threshold was set at. We had it set at 160, I'm sorry. I'll do 180. Analyze. So we can go back to that short continuous and we'll, we'll see all these locations on the right wheel path. 
So we could also do this, you know, from the, the right quality, which is not used for developing grinding plans, but we can look at continuous threshold. We can put in 180 there, segment length, analyze. Look at the map. We can also see the same thing. So we zoom in. It doesn't really tell us if it's to the left or the right where the localized roughness is. And so, it, but we, it, it's one or it's one or both. So there might be overlapping areas. But you can see where a lot of this roughness is by looking at those maps. So, accidentally and did something so okay so we'll go back to the smoothest assurance you can also see the fixed interval areas we can see the chart you know the first tenth mile is over and then the rest of it's good over the 170 or over the 75 this would be where the, the 75 does not apply to existing pavement we'd be grinding down all the localized roughness below 180, so these would lower down. But when we paved back, we'd have to be at 75 or 60. So we can also look at this, we can look at the, the, the map also and see those 10th mile sections and see where, you know, with, where the fixed increment went over, whatever the threshold was set in there. So normally you could be doing this on your finished paving, you know, prior to your corrections. Okay, so Let's go back to short continuous. Now, if I go to this map function, notice there's MapQuest, Road, and Aerial. I, I don't have the license for MapQuest, so I guess I don't get to use it, nor do I have the license for Bing Maps. Bing Maps won't show up either. But, so I have the op OpenStreet is free software. So we can use that. So if I wanted to look at this as an aerial without having one of these other, without using one of these other maps that are in here, I can export this file out and then open it up with Google Earth, which is free software. So <clears throat> to do that, you go to export and then select the KML file. Okay, now it's gonna it's gonna put that because we selected the short continuous report, it's gonna give us a short continuous, and we're looking at the right wheel path. And this name is what Proval the, the faults when we, when we, if we were to ask for the, the PDF report from the for the short continuous, we get a name that's similar to that. So this text is just being added onto that. Okay, so we'll hit save. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and close that, discard. Go look for that KML file. Oh, it was right there at the very top. Click on that. Now it's going to open up Google Earth. Click show tips. So now, now we could you know see this in Google Earth. We can zoom in and I found that if you have a slow internet connection, you got to move this slowly, or otherwise you'll be you'll slide it off. And you'll be out in nowhere land. You'll be spending a lot of time trying to get back to your road. So we can see all these localized roughness areas. So we zoom in. We can see there's a lot of dig outs here. This is the eastbound lane, so it looks like the plot line's off a little bit with respect to the way it's showing up on Google Maps. But you know, there's there's some patches out here already. That's probably what this localized roughness is from. I don't know how old this plot is. I think there's a way to find that in Google Earth. So you can also is we can also take you know go to the street view come on computer's not letting me there we go
Yeah, we have the, the view from the, the, the Google car when it drove through there with its camera. This computer connection is really slow right now. So we can see where the localized roughness is. So anyways, if you have that, if you, if you were to take that map with the aerial out to the field, you'd probably maybe come through here and say, yeah, this is this area is good for, we want to just do pre-paving grinding, then we get up to these other areas where there's a lot of dig outs, and maybe those dig outs are failing. You know, there'd be no reason to do pre-paved grinding through there. We One of the options would do would be to re use the replace asphalt concrete item and, you know, do a big dig out and take those areas out. And then when we did that, that the ride quality, that would be under the straight edge spec, and you wouldn't have to perform pre-paving grinding there. So anyways, hopefully this helps give you an idea of what you can do. To summarize what you learned in this video was you learned how to export a section and why you might want to do that because your file may be too big. You learned how to set, develop a section, enter an event, you know, and look at some, use some basic functionalities of these maps that are made available. So anyways, that's the end of this video. We'll move on to the next.